quilt people of the apocalypse and other places that are currently on fire. <laughs> what is going on right now? Oh my God, like we are so on fire. It is crazy. I mean, this whole year has just been like one existential crisis after another. <laughs> Crazy, 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 crazy. Like, John, my husband, just went back to work this last week. Yeah, so y'all who've just been, you know, living your best life out there, y'all need to know that in California, we've been on lockdown, uh, with the exception of five weeks when we were open, and then we got shut that back down again. Especially in his business, because uh, he has his own hair salon in Beverly Hills, right? So that was really under restriction. So <clears throat> we are just now trying to get back to a regular life, and in the meantime, it's all on fire. The sun is literally bright red, right? I mean, it's like, it's the craziest thing. It looks so bizarre. And like the light shining in from all the windows and everything casts this like super orange glow like throughout the house and everything. It's just, it's the craziest thing. Now, we're not personally like in any, any danger, right? Like we're kind of surrounded in a suburb of like miles of cement. <laughs> so I don't think we're in any, any danger of burning up, but it's some crazy, I mean, I looked it up this morning and we have been above 110 degrees for 44 days. <laughs> like, uh, hello, I'm from Canada. <laughs> This doesn't suit me well. <laughs> Sweating. So, anyways, and yeah, for those of you who have asked, uh, we are still trying to get back to Canada, but the border's closed. So, like, we can't even go and, like, scout for, you know, potential places to live and things like that. So, everything like that is just, it's on hold. And it's like, whoo, one mess after another, huh? Uh, so, anyways, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, enough talking. <laughs> Oh my god, like, if I tuned into, like, my own <laughs> channel, I would hate this. You know, when I'm, like, going on a YouTube tutorial, and it's like, how do you do this? And I'm, shut up, shut up, just get to it, just show me how to do it. <laughs> Anyways, I apologize if y'all are just tuning in now, and that's what you're experiencing. Uh, so today, um, we are going to look at making some clothes, yay! All right, um, I've been making, as you know, these caftans. <laughs> I don't know if you do this to your life or not, but like, I've gotten so many orders that I've just been sewing for everybody else. Like, I haven't even had two seconds to like make one for myself. But the good news is, um, <laughs> everybody else has to live with my learning curve. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> and you paid me. <laughs> but they're turning out great. I mean, like, I kind of started with more like this style. Right? Kind of super old school, 60s, whatever, which I think is really cool, right? It has a big high leg slit right here, right? Like I showed you in that one video when you have to Angelina Jolie the leg, right? <laughs> Very specific reference. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, so what else is going on? Okay, so there's that one. Check this out. Ooh, this one is really beautiful. I'm really, really pleased with this one. It's going to be really fun to wear. Um, it's kind of a really light uh, stretch jersey, right, with the black trim and super long. Again, they all have the super, you know, high leg slit, right? And it's just a fun thing for guys to wear because we don't normally get to have kind of that experience of something kind of loose and flowy. Uh, so that's nice just being around the pool in this summer heat if you don't die. <laughs> and then this is the other one I made. Uh, so this is really cool. Look, it's all like sheer and like see-through and stuff. So that'd be really cool. And I'm excited for uh, whoever bought that. And anyways, all my orders are done. I'm not doing any more. Forget it. I'm not. I just got to take the rest of the year and just focus on what I got. Oh, what I do have going on. I'm sorry. I'm still talking. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. I'm sorry. It's so much going on. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, so what is going on? Uh, all I can say is that there is like really big stuff in the works because like, oh my God, like I have got to retire from real estate. Like, I, like I've been doing it for almost 20 years now. I've had my real estate license 18 years. 
And while I appreciate all that it affords me, both in the time to do all this and the finances to pay for all this, <laughs> I appreciate that. But what it doesn't, like, after performing and, like, you know, being on tour and just being around the world and, you know, having a really big performing career like that and go from being on stage every night with Celine Dion to, like, suddenly I'm cleaning out somebody's garage just so I can get the listing. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just... Mm, it, it doesn't feed my soul. It pays the bills, but anyways... I, Shut up! <laughs> yeah, so there's really big stuff in the works, and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it'll be like a real thing for me, where I can take this platform and actually turn it into something real, sustainable, and financially beneficial. Uh, because that's really what I want to do in life. I, I, I don't know, I, I've said this before, but it's like, I just feel like I'm on this earth to do this thing, right? To do the quilting cowboy thing whatever that is and however that wants to show up in the world, that's just what's kind of like written on my soul, right? That's just what I feel like I should be doing. Um, so I, I got it on my vision board, retire from real estate. And I'll always do real estate and I always have a license, whatever, but I just don't want to be dependent upon that for my livelihood. So in terms of like what I'm doing now in the whole quilting cowboy thing, I wanted to show you the real live version. Some of you saw the stockpile uh, um, uh, photo that I posted on social media. Well, this is the real thing. And I wanted to kind of take a little bit of an up close look at it because I think it's a super cool pattern, especially for men and especially to bust your stash. Is that a thing? Can we say that? Um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> this is the real one and it's so fun. It's not paper pieced. Like I said, a lot of people ask me about that. It's not paper pieced. It's super easy. Literally, if you can cut a rectangle and then slice it on a diagonal and put those two pieces together, you can make this. The pop of color, I think, really makes it, uh, whereas it's not too colorful for guys, but at the same time, it gives uh, just a little bit of excitement and interest, right? So I hope that you love this pattern. Thank you to everybody who purchased it already. I really appreciate that. Um, that does go a long way to helping me and my family survive these crazy times, especially since John has been out of work since March. I don't know. <laughs> it's just <laughs> where we are. <laughs> Welcome to 2020. <laughs> Terrible completely terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I love, love, love this pattern. And it was um, one of the first times I actually did the quilting on it. And I was like super proud of it. And again, this goes back to what we've talked about a lot, um, or at least I've monologued about a lot. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> but, um, you know, <laughs> I, I did the quilting on this one and I was like, yay me. Like it really came out great. And um, so my point <laughs> to the point is that, you know, like I've said before, you have to survive your own learning curve, right? And so just keep doing it. Just keep trying. It's even like with those caftans and the clothes and stuff and the tank tops that we're going to be making later today. Like I was completely terrible. We all are. We're all terrible when we first start and you just have to accept that and you just have to keep going and trying because there's no such thing as failure. No, no, no such thing as failure right? You either have a success or you learn something, right? And that's what we're going for. Just so keep going, think critically, right? And that's how I think I've been able to kind of do most of my learning on my own, uh, be my own teacher, right? To kind of think critically throughout this whole thing. Hello, big truck. So glad you could make it at this moment in time. <laughs> So that's Stockpile. I hope that you like it. Um, like I said, it's super fun. Very, very, very easy. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the pattern is available for sale on my website. <laughs> and then thank you all for the fabric orders. That was awesome and cool. I'm almost out of it, which is great because my poor pottery sign over there is busted. <laughs> it needs to come down. <laughs> and I need to uh, replace it with a new one that says Leaf. That one is coming. I can't wait for the fabrics. They should be here uh, in my studio any day. And then we'll start creating with those. Okay, <clears throat> that was a lot. So let's get to what we're actually doing today, which is, yeah, making clothes, making tank tops. Uh, let me show you. I, I, I posted a video of the other one that I made. Um, 
But what I'm doing is I'm taking all the scraps uh, from all the caftans and things like this, you know, that are not, you know, quilt appropriate uh, fabrics and turning them into clothes, right? So this was my first attempt, right? And so I'll maybe just pop that on so you can see what that looks like. Oh, look, I'm kind of matching today. Oh, that's awesome. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Back on, right? And so I wanted to use some of these fabrics like that I really liked for the caftans into regular clothing. Uh, so this is just a stretch jersey, right? This is a, just a woven, right? Which I think is cool. Now, we're gonna look at the various different ways that you can kind of cut it up in order to use your awesome quilting skills for making clothes. Two worlds that meet. That's gonna be so much fun. But I like this one. I don't know if you can see it. So I, I repeated the kind of woven part at the bottom that I did on the top, then I put this panel in the middle of a stretch jersey, and then I put a couple pieces together on the back because I had some more of this left over. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. I'm gonna give you my measurements and you can probably you know, tweak it an inch or so either way, depending on who you're making it for. I'm about 5'10 and about 200 pounds, okay? So you can kind of gauge that for the, either yourself or for somebody else and um, just take it from there. But I'm gonna give you my measurements and then like I said, just adjust it, okay? So let's look at how we actually make this thing. All right, allow me if you will, just to talk a little bit <clears throat> about fashion fabrics because uh, again, this is my first you know, time that I'm diving into all of this. So I've learned a lot and I, I just wanna share it with you. So the first part is, um, contemplating stretch, right? Now, when we have our final measurements, you're gonna to wanna to take into account whether your fabric is gonna stretch or not, okay? So something delicate like this, um, or like, here, this, right? Those are gonna have some stretch to it, but obviously you don't wanna stretch them too much because that'll really um, distort. Uh, the what you're trying to get from that fabric okay so that's the first thing is in these wovens uh, just be mindful of that they're very very delicate and a little bit hard to work with but I'll show you how to finish it out so it'll be stable and strong but then you get to like a, a stretch jersey like this when you're dealing with something like this you do want to be mindful of uh, the fact that it's only printed on one side that was one of my biggest mistakes that when i went into here i didn't have white thread underneath because i was just really focused on this and then when i turned it over it looked like garbage <laughs> sorry <laughs> anyhow um <clears throat> so this obviously has a lot of stretch to it, but then look at how much more, it doesn't have a ton of stretch this way, but it has a lot this way. So then when I'm putting it on the body, right, I'm gonna want it to stretch more side to side in case I hit the Shoney's Buffet. And then, you know, not so much up and down. So that's what I'm gonna be looking at in terms of this. But other stretch jerseys, here's a lightweight one. And I love, love, love the look and feel, the drape of this is just really beautiful. And so um, looking at this in terms of stretch, it has stretch kind of, again, more in one direction than the other. So I'd wanna cut that. So again, this is going side to side with the most amount of stretch. Um, and then we get into these types of fabrics. I don't even know what the heck this is called, right? It's, it's very light and flowy. The problem with fabrics like this is that you, um, if, if you put it on a on sweaty skin, it kind of sticks like a plastic bag, right? So you're gonna wanna be mindful about maybe where you keep that um, and maybe just have that like uh, on the top part of the body where I have like this, where you're not gonna be as sweaty so that it, down here you still have movement. And so anyways, that's something to think about. And then, <laughs> look at this, this is just fun. But the problem with something like this is if it snags, right, you get that really strong line across where it really destroys the entire piece of fabric. So, you know, just be really careful in what you're choosing because they all react very differently. This one only has stretch two ways, so really virtually no stretch that way and lots this way. So just be uh, on the lookout for stretch um, as you're looking at final measurements. And I'm gonna pull this tank off and we're gonna look at um, how big we wanna cut it. Okay. So as much as I'm dying to use this 
gold sparkly fabric. I think I'm not going to because uh, it really is difficult to work with and uh, if you snag it, that's it, you're done. So uh, we're gonna look at using this uh, stretch jersey here on the bottom and then this kind of uh, woven see-through number. <laughs> Don't know what that is. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> We're going to use that on the top, uh, so in the same manner that I used the woven on the top of this one for the front panel, right? And then we'll look at the dimensions from here to here, inserting a jersey panel here. Uh, I may not repeat uh, the woven on the bottom again, just because this one is, is really pretty delicate, right? And I might want to stabilize it on the bottom a bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach right, basically these. So I'm gonna create the front panel, which again is gonna be uh, 23 inches, right, cut across this way and just make a big panel. And so then I will just attach those and then we'll look at that and how we cut. And it's really important that the front is cut differently than the back, okay? But I'm just gonna make that panel first, okay? So I'm looking at, again, just making a 22 inch by 30 inch panel. First thing I have to do is kind of square this thing up because it's oof, all over the place, right? So just so that I can deal with a uh, solid rectangle, I'm just gonna trim this up and get this to 23 inches here. Okay, so now I'm coming in on more of a actual rectangle so that would be your first step is just to square up the fabric and then you have something you know more known as far as what the end results are going to be um, in this piece okay so that's my first piece and this is coming in at about 16 inches all right so i'm going to work on making the top portion of it next Okay, one more thing. In the same way that we look at quilt fabric, is, is it directional or not? Um, you also, I think, want to think about at this point, like where do I want the center of the body to be? Because these lines are so clearly defined, I think I want this part right here, right, to be in the uh, center of the body, right, where, so I'm, I'm just going to move this over and think about exactly where on the body I want this to line up, and then I'm gonna cut it. Okay, these are very, very delicate since they're cut, and um, plus the one on the bottom is super stretchy. So I'm just gonna pin this thing into submission <laughs> and uh, get this so that it does not, when I take it to the machine, that it, it's really gonna be held together with just a buttload of pins. And have that go all the way around. Now, there is a salvage on a lot of these which you can really use to your advantage. Like see how on the end of this one, right, there's a, a really tightly woven, right, piece which you can use to your advantage uh, if you can, but I'm not gonna really be taking that into account because it's gonna be all cut up, but I'm just going to pin this together and then take it to the sewing machine and put it together for my front panel. Okay, so I have done the straight stitch. I'm just taking these pins out. Like I said, what I'm gonna do next is just a little zigzag stitch beyond the straight stitch. So the straight stitch goes here. I'm just gonna put a little zigzag on the other side to kind of just shore it up a little bit. Um, Cause again, I don't have a serger. If I had a serger, I could finish it differently, but I don't. So I'm making do with what I have. Okay, so that's what I'm doing after I take these pins out and we'll just run it on this side right, of my straight stitch. I pretty much have my front panel done, but what I wanna make sure is that anything that's behind this is obviously gonna be seen. So I wanna go through and tack down this on the back side so that this part, right, where I've sewn doesn't flip up to be seen from the front, but rather I'm gonna take it and tack it down so that it can't flip up, okay? Oh, my hands are in the way, right? So that this part here, right, can't flip up, but rather just tack it down all the way across. All right, so since we're using uh, 
you know, pieced panels, I kind of want, and sorry, but it's about a thousand degrees in here and I wanted to show you kind of how it works on the body as far as uh, proportions, right? So I just use like extra piece, right? In order to find out where on me feels like, because I mean like, look, look at this front panel, right? It's, it looks super girly, right? It looks like some kind of, what do they call them? I don't know, sorry. <laughs> But, um, you know, it looks like it would be super girly, right? But in order to make it masculine, um, I want to find the proportion that feels strong to me, right? So for me, I would want that to be, you know, right across here, like armpit to armpit. Like that, that's a line that feels strong. Or right, you know, here under kind of your boobs, but, you know... I don't know because that's a mesh top if I want like my nipples to stick out of the mesh like that's probably not good so when I'm uh, determining where that line is going to be for the mesh above and the stretch jersey below I want to find for me the right proportion and for me that feels good right about you know armpit to armpit right that feels like a strong line that's where I want it to hit portion wise. So I'm going to take that into account. I'm going to measure myself here and then I'm going to cut it appropriately on the table. Oh, and by the way, I wasn't meaning that in any kind of disparaging way. If you want your thing to look girly, that's awesome. That's just not my personal style. But if that's what you want to do, you know what? I know lots of guys that love that. I've been making caftans to them all and they love it. So do what's right for you. Okay. I just wanted to show you what I like in terms of um, the way things fit on me. Okay, so let's look at cutting this. All right, so I know for me it's about 10 inches from uh, the bottom to the top of the lacy part, okay? That's what's working for me. I cut off this extra. I'm gonna keep it because it does have the selvage, right, on the bottom, which is gonna make it a lot stronger. So if I do need to pop a little piece on the bottom in order to, you know, get a longer piece, I will. But this is now ready. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this, right, and fold it in half face to face. And then from there, I'm gonna cut out my neck hole, right? And start to make it uh, look like an actual shape. To translate that, here's the first one I did. Okay. So you can see that on this, the front panel right, gets cut a lot lower than the back panel, okay? And I can kind of use this just as a guide to better understand how I'm gonna cut this, okay? Okay, so these are the measurements that's working for me. Again, I have my panel, my front panel, folded in half face to face, okay? So five inches from this corner to this pin four inches from this corner to this pin, and then two more inches, and then 11 and a half inches down this way. And what that does is you're gonna cut the scoop out of the neck, then you have two inches for the shoulder strap, and then from this edge of the shoulder strap back down to here where it's gonna meet uh, the back, okay? So we're just gonna very carefully, and hopefully with precision, <laughs> cut this out and just kind of eyeball it on the curve up to there, right? And then again, from here down to here. And that's just kind of a more slow arcing slope to there. Okay, so that is our first panel, the front, and let's see how that looks. Moment of truth. <laughs> okay, there we go. And that is looking pretty good. All right, check it out. I have my front panel now on the back panel, right? The main difference here is how far you come down here, which is really only about one inch, okay? Now you're gonna wanna put this on top of the other one so that these shoulder straps, right, line up. 
And so you're just going to take a cut so that they match here and then you're going to cut from here so they match again down here. Again, just keeping this, this cut here really shallow. So we'll just go across and it'll meet its neighbor there and then bring it back down and join it again here. Just that easy. Now take your two panels, put them face to face, right? And I'm just gonna sew across the top of the shoulder here, sew across the top of the shoulder here, and then down the sides here and here. All right, I have those two panels essentially together. I'm happy with the way that I have kind of uh, lined everything up. So now I'm gonna do the trim work. We talked about last time um, using this, uh, what do I call it, bias tape. Um, I've kind of grown accustomed to it now that I've used it a little bit more. I know that I said you could make your own, but it's actually pretty easy just to buy it this way. It's like, it's just a one-step solution. So that's pretty easy. So I'm gonna turn it in, uh, in outside right, hello. <laughs> outside right to start to apply the finish work around the neck and the armpits. Okay, so we got that ready to go. And so I'm just gonna start working with this and we'll put that around, but I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. What do you think? <laughs> I think it'll be cool. All right, let's see how this is fitting. It's, I think pretty good. I haven't done the neck, but I did the trim on the arms. I'm happy with that. So I think the only thing I wanna maybe change is like the length in the back and this little thing is just, it's too long. So anyways, it's just that simple. What I like about this and what I think would be really fun moving forward is to think about wearable quilts, right? How fun would that be to take all of our quilting skills and maybe translate them into, you know, something like this? Because let's, let's be honest, right now it is just too hot to be working on quilts. If you live in a place where that's not so, lucky for you but uh, where we are it's just it, it's too much so I'm gonna continue working on that I'm having fun making these clothes and all these other things and I hope you're enjoying being on the journey with me <laughs> and oh if you're watching this on YouTube I'm like 200 subscribers away from hitting 10,000 and once I hit 10,000 then YouTube will actually promote me and what I'm doing and things like that So that would really help me out if you are watching this on YouTube If you could just hit that subscribe button, I would so appreciate it. Okay. Thanks so much And I will see you next time. Bye